Hey there guys, Cloud of Page back again for the next installment of our Jex Bounty Tour. So we're getting into part 3 now. Part 3 which brings us all the way along to Mission 9. Mission 9 is the Collector's Horde. Rumor has it that Talir is searching for some lost family heirloom. And I've got a lead on who might have it. I think it's time we pay an old friend a visit. Okay, cards cost two less the turn they're drawn. So probably only the turn they're drawn. Doesn't apply to your opening hand. Hmm. Interesting. So that top decking late game becomes very important. You know what? With my <laughs> limited restriction of decks here, I am probably just going to jump into the mono time again. It's heavy on four drops, and drawing a late game four drop, drawing extra cards, probably going to help us. Let's see how we go, though. But we're playing against Curiox the Collector. Ah, uh, jeez. Alright. This actually isn't too terrible a hand if he doesn't kill us. Uh, we do want to get some, some land, though. I think we've got to ship it back. The Amber Monument is just not good ramp. Though neither is this. Didn't you learn last time? So you your lesson the last time we met Hunter. I did. This time I brought back up. Yeah, my, my voice acting needs work. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. And these bits of script are popping up way too quick for me. Ooh, twinning ritual. Oh, that's going to get tasty later on. But my <laughs> my aim to draw a bunch of four drops late game has not worked so good. Though that's not working too bad. Let's get some pressure on the field and start punching face. Now, pretty much anything we draw, we can play at the turn we draw it. Your lives are so brief. Why throw them away? I'm mainly just doing this for my own entertainment now. Swing! And we'll drop the monument out. I've got enough stuff to play. It just depends on what I can then start drawing. If I draw anything too appealing, awesome. If not, we can start doing a few bits and pieces of shenanigans. Ooh, clock roaches. That's gonna get fun, isn't it? Oh, gee willikers. Okay, well, I don't want to use the Praxis Displacer on clock roaches. I could use the Sandstorm Titan, but I think I just want to get this obelisk out and start just walloping in. I know he's got another 3-3 three, three in hand, but hey. Ooh, double blocking. Okay, cool. Take one of them out, die to a 2-2, hit you for 3. Try and get the clock a bit more real. Yep, hit me for 2, that's fine. And he plays out a 2-cost Champion of Wisdom. Sweet Christmas. Oh, if I had an extra hand, extra head, extra land, I'd be very happy. That thing's not getting flying for a while. Ah, oh, jeez. And even when it does, I've got the Sandstorm Titan. I could just play out another another obelisk. He's then punching in for six. Ugh. I could go for Ancient Law, try and get lucky and play the Marison's Disciple out as well. Whew. May even be the way to go. If I don't get lucky, though, I'm going to be sitting here with my hand crying. Uh. 5-6 is going to be a 6-7, so let's just do that. Threat on the board that can answer his threat on the board. And I hope he doesn't have anything too too horrid coming in, but given that there was some echoing... Evolution. Yeah. That's gross. It's gross, but it didn't do anything for him. Okay, let's get these lands into play. Okay, if we build out, yeah, we build out, hopefully keep on getting lands, let's just make it wide, he's gone all in on this champion, next turn I can bounce the champion and just slap him around the face a bit. Zero cost bold adventurer, I'm fine with that. That's nice. 
do I just throw that out there? No, I think I want to be drawing. Let's get in. Three cost Reinarch and a free Temple Scribe? Yes, please. Oh, a one cost Dawnwalker would be lovely, but I think that Reinarch is just giving me made way too much potential. Alright, next turn we bounce. Yeah, get a Wisp. It's fine. See if I care. If I can draw a land, I'm also laughing. Okay, 4-6 is good. That's not a land. 4 cost Carnosaur is nice, but I really just want that thing off my board. Get off my lawn, kid! Swinging. Of these two, I would rather kill the 2-3 two, than the 2-2. Two, two. Cracks that down. And now, he is well and truly screwed. Unless he plays so many creatures that there's nothing else going to happen. Curiox, that was your only play? Buddy. Buddy! Buddy. Massive creatures, swing for the win. Punch. Wig punch, and there comes the 10-10 Reinarch. Whoa, minus 23. I tire of this. What do you want? I have no idea how much that's peaking, so if that really blows out the audio, well, then it really blows out the audio. And our bounty for the match. We've got the hibernating behemoth. Yeah, that's a pretty sweet card. I can see that doing some work because it's a dinosaur. We all know, dinosaur tribal is the way we're going to go. But that bullet has gotten through the face, and that pushes us on to guard duty. Guard duty says, Caravan work pays well enough, even if the road to Skycrack is colder than a Yeti's tail. We can make a fair coin. Sorry, we can make a fair coin or two on our way through the mountains. But we've got to protect a caravan at all costs. Interesting. Well, how does that work then? I've got a. I've got an odd deck that I'm tempted to throw out here. I've got a Skycrag Burn deck. It's been looking for a finisher, and I don't think the deck's quite working yet, but I think I'm going to give it a try. Lots of card draw, lots of burn. Yeah, let's see what happens. If this fails, I think we'll switch to Armory and just have creature removal. But that's a, that's a decent removal suite to start with. So, uh, yeah, let's keep that. Effectively four torches. Look out! It's an ambush! <laughs> yep, always has that impact at the end. Protected at all costs. Does it not do anything? Must attack. Okay, just didn't attack last turn. Okay. No, I'm going to take that off my board. Just not going to give it the chance. Static Bolt. Oh yeah. we got to push forward. Keep that wagon safe. Punchin. None of these are fast spells, but that's okay. I will keep them for protection for the caravan. It could just be that a low-curve aggressive deck is the way to go with this, but... Alright, well that's going to die. Hmm. Draw two cards, then put a hand, card from your hand on top of your deck. Like, I want to do that. Really increases the static bolt, but I think at the moment we just blot that away. Hopefully get a chance to keep the other two hanging around. Maybe we can then accelerate the clock as well. <laughs> Possibly the wrong deck to be running with this, but hey. What's a little bit of fun? Oh. Oh. That's an interesting choice. Well, I've got a sigil, so we'll play that. We will... No, we don't have a sigil. Well, that was foolish, wasn't it? Oh, dear. Okay. Let's just blot that away. And charge our good, healthy pilgrims through. We 
do want to be hitting our land drops. Get a few more sigils out. Get the power up. There's a troublemaker. Cool. More. Awesome. That can go back on top. Gives us a few more options. I'm probably playing this very wrong. There was those of you watching with the flame blast in hand going, No! Page! Throw it at his face! But, eh. Que sera, sera. He's throwing out another troublemaker. I'm getting a static bolt. But all my static bolts are getting that bit better. Doing four damage. Yep. Blot. Swinging. I've played the sigil this turn. I have not played a sigil this turn. Alright. Okay. Five cards in his hand versus the one in ours. Oh, that's not good. That's really not good. And I have to use this on one of them. Ah, oh, sadness is. Alright. Kill it. Swing. Hey, it didn't block. Okay, then if they've got another creature, I'm in the same predicament next turn. Or, they just want to draw more cards. Which is completely understandable. Ooh, Echo. Another troublemaker? Yeah, okay, we're in trouble now. We're in big trouble now. And we drew a sigil, and that is going to be game. Okay. Well, we've had our bit of fun for the, <laughs> for the round out of the way. Does it really matter? Yeah, it does. Taking the snake down with me. Shoot, we lost the damn wagon! Yeah, thanks, Jack. I could... I could see that. Alright. Alright. <laughs> These things happen. As I said, looks like we're going to need a lot of removal. Getting a bit of a clock on there wouldn't be bad either, but I think we're just going to switch to this armory deck. And really start laying some beats in. Okay, that's a... That's a pretty bad hand. I mean, it's okay eventually, but... I don't want to be sitting there with the sort of a carrier in hand. That looks prettier to me. Getting a carrier out would be nice. Yes, Jack, it is, surprisingly, another ambush. What is going on, kids? Now, I imagine... Ah, oh, you can't attack this turn. I imagine, as we encountered in our replayed game last round, last... Sorry, the first video. Yes, we're going to push it forward. That uh, my opponent will have drawn a different hand this time. So, it's at least good to know that I can't sculpt my hand and my redraw is based around what they did last game. But it's also not good. Ah. Oh. Ah, oh, well, that's just mean. Okay, and that means they've got that larger Yeti in hand, which is also not great. Yeah, I don't need the shadow at the moment. Don't think I've got anything haste. Hang on. Let's let's just double check what we draw with the Inspire. Auric Runehammer. That's going to be a tasty one. Especially if they keep not playing Sigils. Ooh, and a 6-3 Auric Runehammer, which will get us our Armorsmith. Play your one creature, sir. Scaly Gruen. Not a problem. Oh. And the Daisha, when I get the sigils up for that, that will be nice and tasty. Armorsmith comes through. Auric Runehammer ruins someone's day. Because like ruins, like ruins. Like, yeah, jokes are funny when you explain them. All right, Paige. Serpent Trader. That's got to die. Oh, Yes. We've got what we need to be able to go into the day show, which is exactly what we want if they're going to be able to play out some yetis, like a scouting party. And if we draw one more sigil, a carrier hits the board and we'll clean this up very quickly. And that's why this deck actually, you know, gets rated, and why Sky Scrag burn deck no one's ever heard of. But, oh. 
Oh, sad. I almost have to replace. I'm not going to replace with the Daisho. I'll keep it for the Vroon Hammer, just in case they play anything bigger. But. What you got, kid? <clears throat> You've got Diddly and Squat. Okay, that's got Aegis. So we'll just whack it. And... Is that... Uh, swing in for nine. I'm so used to casting a carrier after... Um, rise to the occasion? I think it is the four power tutor something up. Oh, you're not even going to block. You're going to take away my Aegis. That's just petty, man. That's just petty. Wow. Well, petty is as petty does. A 9-8 sort of a carry in hand. Torch to the face for minus one. We're through. Keep moving. No! I don't know why the Yeti screamed no when before it was just screaming rag. But... Pushing through my Jex Bounty reward card, Cliffside Porter! Yay! Yep, Deranged Dynamance is gonna come through and be a real card. Love the swords, or the knives coming through on the wanted posters. And now, now we're on to Copper Hall Traitors. Seems some Copper Hall Longhorns went into business for themselves. The guild's got rules about fighting their own clan folk. But they'll look the other way while we settle up for them. When a unit is played, change its strength to match its health. Oh, oh, that just sounds fun. Okay, we did this in the last video. Let's do it now. Ah, uh, not my collection. We're going to make a deck, guys. Big butts. Bigger butts generally come in the Huru colors. And there are some great... Great little creatures that we can get. That'll be like a one cost 2 2 flyer. But let's get some permafrosts up. Borderlands Wayfarer is just incredible. What's that? West East Wind Herald is suddenly a 3 3 flyer for two. Let's get these Cloud Snake saddles in. Let's go flyers. I'm feeling flying. Uh, got a few options, but I don't want that really. I may want the lightning strikes. Hmm. Yeah, let's see if we can just do a flyers type of thing. That's not going to be great. Haven't got anyone else who's got a lower. No. Okay. Give me some card draw in there. Don't care about the Carnosaur. That's not that wonderful. One party starter is just fun, but we're not going that route. <coughs> uh, that's not really what we want. Five mana five five is fine, but I don't think that's where we're going either. A five mana five five that gives our flying units plus one plus one. Yeah, let's get a couple of those in there. Okay, that's that's a decent wallop. I don't think we need any other big cards. I don't really care about the Misfail Drake. Call the Ancients is just a good card anyway. Ooh, if we, yeah, if we pair it with Elysian. Oh, sorry, I can't just put in normal Storm Links. Um, Camel's not bad either. Hey, this is kind of fun. All right. A couple of those. Bit here, bit there. Oh, sad. Synergy is not working. Oh. I don't think we have any other dinosaurs in here at the moment. No, it does not look like there's any other dinosaurs. Okay. <laughs> We're not going to chuck in Shimmer Pack. Oh, sad though it is. Yeah, let's go Elysian with it. So we've now got... Yeah. We've got eight of our sigils, which means we only need another 17. Oh. Oh. This, please. Now, is there anything that's going to help me out wildly in here? Yeah. Bold Adventurers. I know I'm going very low curve with this. 
Um, is there anything else that'll help us through? I'm not going expensive. That's... No. <laughs> Dawnwalkers would suddenly be one of the worst things ever. Dune Phantoms, however, are spectacular. Yeah. Alright, alright. Let's get a bit more card draw, so we're just drawing all over the shop. Is there anything else big? I mean, Sandstorm Titan stays good, shockingly. And Tower Top Patrol. Okay, where are we at with sigils? What do you recommend? Phew, and that is... <laughs> Add power has suddenly pushed up to 91 power, so I don't think that's going to be where I want to go. Okay, yeah, we're still too low on, on power. Are there any, any two drops that we should be dropping? Probably, because I've probably got way too many in here. Um... Look, I'll just run the two bold adventurers. Hang on a second. What's our split looking like? It's primarily primal, but eight. So we're currently at 18. Uh, so 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Okay, so now we've got an idea of what cuts we need to make. We don't need too much of a top end. So let's lower that by one. Actually, Sandstorm Titan. Those of you playing the home game would have been screaming at me. Oi, Paige, this guy means your units can't fly, so the whole theme of this quick fire deck has just been thrown out. Uh, I do want to put a few of those in. I'm possibly a little heavy on card draw, so we'll drop one, maybe two. Let's just play two Ancient Laws. And if there's anything else to trim... Permafrost, just too nice to play. Uh, maybe a Storm Links. There's only so great they are. Like, let's cut two Storm Links and just have in one Lumen Defender. Okay. Time Primal Flying Deck. Let's go back to our campaign. Jump in for Jack's Bounty. This is a very quick fire deck. And hopefully it's going to work. As we go up against the Copper Hall Traitors. Traitor! Yeah, okay. Some of you were waiting for that. Some of you were hoping I didn't ever go there. <clears throat> okay, let's see what we get. Couple of whole traitors. I mean, it's not a great card. Also, great hand, but it's not terrible. I can land a 3 3 on turn 2, be attacking with a 6 6 in the air on turn 3. Yeah. So here we go. STAY OUT OF THIS SMOOTH SKIN! Sorry, Ribeye. Can't do that. Ribeye? Dude, that's racist! Wow, Jack's a jerk! The heck's that about? Jack, buddy! Our ways are our own! I haven't decided on a consistent voice for them yet. Um... Yeah, I wonder if that'll... That'll start to ramp up as well. Shum. That's pretty. I like that. You can play your power. Punch for three. We are not blocking that infantry, buddy. Sure. I wonder what deck they're going for. Wow, they're not even willing for the trade. Okay, drawing more cards would be great here. Oh, actually the ambush would be great here. Let's swing it in. Just go straight to 3-3. Three, three. That's right, she's not a flyer yet. Forgot about that. Yeah, we're just going to end turn here, because then next turn we can attack with a 9-9 nine, nine flyer. Sure, man. Swing. He's not swinging. It's very bizarre. Okay, card draw for days. Punch! Oh, yeah, I love the new mechanics, guys. This is fun. Leave us! No, I don't think that I will. Cool, man, you've got a 3-3. Three, three. No blocks. No fuss, no fuss. What are you playing? Hey, 4-4 four, four with Overwhelm. I wildly don't care. Okay, punch for 9. Fight. 
Okay, now sometimes you leave these for playing in your opponent's turns, but this time I'm keeping a hold of it because if I'd hit a sigil... If I'd hit a sigil, I'd have been in a happy spot. I didn't hit a sigil. But I've never been sigil screwed and been quite as happy as I am now. Ooh, hello Mithril Mace. Kill my creature, hit the seven. I then kill you. Okay. Well, when the game's shorter than the deck construction... <laughs> you know you're doing something, right? Here we go. Not even playing for more value. We're just going to crack him in the face. Think they'll know it if we take anything on the way out? So, Jex racist against the Minotaurs, and now he's looting their house. Dude, Jex a jerk. And... Understandably, we get the Copperhole Bailiff, which is a card I love. I think this card can make some very big splashy impacts on the meta at the moment. Whing! Alright. But that pulls us all the way along to Blood on the Rocks. Crazy comes in lots of flavors, but fitting yourself to a dragon is a new one by me. We've got to hit him hard and fast before his friends show up for dinner. When a player is reduced to 20 and 10 health or lower, they draw a random dragon. They draw a random dragon. <laughs> okay. Um, right. Well, that's an interesting one, isn't it? Okay, let's, let's, let's think about this for 10 seconds. Um, you know what? I haven't played it yet. I've got a Rakano deck, it's very similar to the tier 1, but I've splashed in some black so I can get some dread returns, because I've always found that Rakano loses creatures too easily. But it does get quite aggressive, we'll be punching in damage pretty quickly. We'll be drawing terrible hands like this, which has been one of the reasons why I've not been liking playing the Rakano decks as much. But hopefully we don't get sigil screwed. You're too late! The moment of glory is upon us! You know, crazy people. We like crazy people. Okay. One, two, three. I'm happy with that. Or two, three, or two, three. Yeah. Okay. Especially with... Okay. They're playing some kind of a burn deck, aren't they? Tasty. Alright. Where were you last turn? Get him bleeding. We want the dragons on his set, not ours. Alright, alright. Getting him bleeding. Jeez, Jack. So how often was it? Was it every 10? Well, it was reduced to 20 and 10 or lower health. Okay. Well, we can definitely do that. He hasn't played anything last turn. Makes me curious if he has anything. But the creature has Aegis. So let's war cry away. Ah, oh, sadness. Matt, you've got to give props to the Eternal team. They have really pulled out some nice stuff with this AI. I'm, I'm impressed. Alright, let's just lay some power on the board, shall we? Could have gotten the dragon draw there, but I'm okay just flooding out with creatures. Oh... That's right, yeah, I also splashed in a smuggler stash. We've got enough equipment in the deck, so it makes sense to me. Okay, swing in. He's playing with torches, so I'm going to keep the finest hour up. And we get a dragon. I feel their wings! What's this guy? Vorpex the Great Ruin. Aw, oh, man. Yep, I'm nowhere near that. <laughs> Okay, but we're war crying for days. My opponent has almost nothing. I've got one way through. Yeah, they've kind of skipped. And wallop. Fight. Knocking him down to three. Yes, feast upon me. That's, that's ill, man. You've got problems. But I will feast upon you because this game, whoa. And this is why Rakano Warcry does well in ranked. Because late game you play two drops that are 10 10s with Aegis and Warcry. And fight! 
Uh, could have put him to negative 10. Nice work. Let's get out of here before more dragons show up. And okay. Ah, and I've hit the giant master quest requirement as well. But for the bounty, we have pulled in bait. Bait I love. My haunting scream decks are just... Oh. Looking at tricolor for this. Also, I'm going to crack open some... Some chests, being a nice gold chest. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, guys, that is game four. Bullet to the face. And we've now got another, another little part of this picture. It's all looking pretty cool. Okay, guys, that's going to wrap it up for part three of Jex Bounty. Thanks for tuning in. Give us any thoughts in the comments below. Let us know how you're doing with it. I'm really enjoying just cracking some decks together. Anyway, guys, I've been Clouded Page. This is Pick One, Pack One for Jex Bounty. We'll see you in the final video.